In this movie, I'm going to show you how to actually write data to the files now that we know how to access them. And once you have the accessing down, writing to them is dead simple. Now this is the file access.php file I was working with. I'm just going to save it as a new file just so we can keep track of the different stages that we're working on. So I'm just going to do save as, and instead of file access, I'm going to call it file write. There we go. Now I have the other one saved to refer back to, and we can go ahead and make changes here. So I'm still going to work with the W mode. I'm just going to make a note here that this is going to overwrite anything that was there before, just so that I remember. And we already have the close. What we need to do now is actually write to the file. And it's super simple. It's just F write, and then the handle, and then whatever we want to write, ABC. And just to make a note here, that's going to return the number of bytes that were written or false. And it's up to us whether we want to capture that or not. We could also you know, make it an if-then statement if we wanted to check and see whether it succeeded or not. Generally, if you can open the file, writing goes ahead and takes place. So there's no real reason that we need to capture that data. We usually just go ahead and write the data and then close it when we're done. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. Let's open up our web browser. And this one is going to be called file write. So there it ran. We didn't get any data there. We haven't learned how to read from the file yet. So instead, we're just going to come over here to file test.txt and open it up. And there's our ABC. So there it is. It did go in. So if we wanted to write more to it, we could do the same thing. Let's say F write and then the handle again. And this time we're going to pass in one, two, three. So we'll save it. Again, we're going to be overwriting that file that was there. Uh, let's hit return. We'll open it up file test. Now it has ABC123. So you'll notice that when we issue another write statement, it just picks up where it left off. And that's going to introduce us to this idea of the pointer. It works like a cursor. So while this file is open, it puts the pointer at the beginning of the file, and now it's waiting for us to type. And when you do an F write, it types ABC for us. And then the pointer is sitting there right after the C, just like a cursor blinking. And then when we say F write again, it writes the next bit of text. So keep that idea of the cursor or the pointer in mind, because we'll be looking at it again in a moment. Now, more often than not, I would say that you typically construct all of the content that you want to output. So let's say one, two, three, and then we'll put in a new line, four, five, six. There we go. And then we'll simply just say, all right, after we've got all our content put together, pushed into a variable with all the line breaks, then we just do write. And we probably wouldn't even have a first one here. We would just simply construct everything and then say, write it to the file, close the file. So that's a more common way to work. I wanted to show you this also with the line endings because it raises another point, which is that double quotes matter with, and I'm going to say slash in, but it's really with any of those special control characters. Single quotes will put in a literal slash in, but the double quotes say, be aware when you're looking at this string that there might be some special characters like line returns. So the double quotes are important. So I'm going to save that and let's go ahead and just to prove to ourselves that it worked one last time, we'll do file write and then we'll go back and open up file test. And there it is, ABC123 and then 456 on a new line. Now there's one thing I want to caution you about here is that you might be tempted at some point to do something like a chmod, let's say chmod and then the handle, and then let's say 0777, and that would make the file readable, writable, and so on. Well, be careful with this because the handle does not work with chmod. The handle only works with these that begin with F, F write, F open, F close. Those are the ones that use the handle. This wants the actual file name. So in that case, this would actually change it to the right permissions. So just be careful with that, that the handle is not universally used. It's only really in these simple cases. Now, if all of that seems a little bit laborious to go through the process of every time writing a line and the handle and everything, there's also a shortcut. So I'll just show you, it's called file put contents. So we have a file, I have the contents all here together in a single string, then I can use file put contents, pass in the file name, pass in the contents, and it's a shortcut for opening the file, writing the contents, and closing it. Now that's going to overwrite by default, so be very careful because it's going to just blow away anything that was there before with this new stuff. And I went ahead and captured the size of what it wrote just so that I could echo it back just to show you how that works. So let's try it. It's going to do the first writing at the top and then it'll do the file put contents. And we can just see the difference. So there we are. A file of 11 bytes was created 
And if we open up file test now, you'll see it only has this 1112223333, which was what I wrote here in this content. All of this got wiped away. So this is the shortcut for doing all of those steps. If you're just simply going to write a whole file, you can use this instead of going through all of those steps. In the next movie, we'll take a look at how we can delete files.